focusing on enclosures with collared lizards, which are a very active species, is very important. Adults will need a 75 gallon or 48 inch by 18 inch floor space. And this is ideal for up to one male, two females, never more than one male. Now for juveniles, a 40 gallon or equivalent can be a temporary size as they grow. Here I'm going to show you guys one of our 100 gallon equivalent custom enclosures where you can see a nest box in the back. We have an arch with a basking light and measured UVB light for the proper distance to get the great UVB spectrum. Washed play sand is ideal for enrichment and a large water dish for hydration is perfect. Now moving on to temperature and lighting. Basking temperatures should be around 95 to 105, never getting above 107 due to retreating. Now cool side, 80 to 85 is ideal, and nighttime temperatures should never drop below 70 to allow for proper digestion. Moving on to lighting, again, UVB lighting is very important in this species, very similar to bearded dragons. You can have mercury vapor bulbs, the 160 watt is great for mega ray, any T5 strip lights like the Reptisun or, or the Arcadia T5, 12% or 14%. Now you can also use to increase temperatures some of the Philips plant bulbs or halogen bulbs. Again, no UVB, but adds good temperature for basking areas. Moving on to diet, I'm going to break down a main food source to a snack. Main food sources generally are... Dubia roaches, crickets, grasshoppers, if you can get them, are a good main source. Again, you want high protein, low fats. So these are not the larval stages, so they'll move around. Great enrichment for these active lizards to chase after, hunt down. You see a lightning yellow New Mexico male here, a baby collared lizard shooting out and taking down one. And again, the differentiation is you don't want these high fat, very addictive, more so needed for snacks that I'll show you now of a larval stage. So we'll break down some of the snacks that are great for maybe once a week to keep good weight on or even using as a handling snack or reward that they then will love to be handled more because it's this high fat, tasty snack, almost like you eating a cheeseburger. But first was a hornworm there. Now we have mealworms that are great for juveniles and babies and moving on to superworms. Again, High in fat, so no more than once a week as a snack here, or if you are trying to put on some extra weight. But again, they can be get a very addictive to these, and then won't eat a better main food source like a dubia or cricket. Again, the next step of hydration and humidity is very important. Collar lizards do not get their hydration from their food sources, even though they are a desert lizard. So having a clean fresh daily water source in a water bowl or even sometimes you can splash it in a food dish for them just to go over and drink you can try spraying the walls sometimes they like that or dripping it in on rocks just to see the movement of the water to get them to drink and again humidity you're going to want around 20 to 40 percent this will allow for proper shedding and overall generally less issues for respiratory and other concerns moving on to handling I'm going to break down four simple and easy steps that will really allow you to handle your collared lizards well at home. And here I have step one of the process of handling your collared lizards. This is the scoop technique. As you can see, you slowly approach the collared lizard. may be apprehensive at first, but just gently scoop them up, guide them into your hand and hold them. And a lot of times, what I just showed earlier, training them just to sit in your hand is very key and then you can start the next step. Right here, step two is a slow and steady removal from the closure. You don't want to jerk your hand or pull it fast. Again, the slow scooping of the collared lizard followed by a nice slow and steady approach out of the tank. This way they don't get scared and they feel comfortable coming out into your hand outside. They may walk around just a little bit, may lose balance, but again, a slow and steady approach out of the enclosure allows them to be able to enjoy being held outside of the tank. Step three in the process is positive reinforcement. Now I like to generally pet or give them a snack like a mealworm or superworm. While I'm holding them, here you can see I'm petting one of the female aqua flames as she likes it. You can give them little scratches, but again, they will love to take some superworms from you, and this gives them 
more of a positive, again, reinforcement while you're holding them so they enjoy it better. And finally, step four, another slow and steady placement now back into the enclosure. I normally like to use my other hand for this process, but while filming and using that hand, I kind of had to use slight to assist. But again, slowly lowering the collar lizard in, letting it see that it is going into its closure. It might get scared a little bit, but then it'll realize, okay, this is home and gently walk in. Again, trying to place them comfortably in here is very key and ideal. Don't throw them in and don't drop them. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed this.